Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, and this is part two of the Time Dollar book, chapter 12, on the El Paso, Texas nuns who set up time banks to help poor mamas in the barrio get the services of the old mamas to show them how to take care of their babies and bring child mortality down. So this is one wonderful book, and this is part two, lesson number 67 in time banking. Patients as part. Maybe they wouldn't pay entirely in time dollars, Armijo countered. They could use a new currency for part of the bill that they didn't have the money for. She was groping along with everybody else, but somehow time dollars seemed to offer a way for people to contribute something. Armijo wasn't just talking from, about another form of payment. She was looking for a fundamentally different way for the center to think about its mission. It was clearly that there would never be enough money from the daughters of charity or for the people they served, so patients would have to become partners in their own care by producing some of the health services they needed. What kind of services could patients provide other patients? Well, the traditional model meant case-by-case -case treatment, get people to the clinic, give them shots, screen them for diabetes or cancer or TB. What could people do in that context to pay for their treatment? And where would San Vicente get the resources to launch this new program when they were already in the red? Well, one possibility was transportation. People have to get to the clinic before they can get treatment. So other patients could earn time dollars for driving them. And fewer no-shows at the clinic meant more revenues. With time dollars, Central San Vicente could expand to include counseling and prenatal care for expectant mothers, as well as help after the babies were born. This is a proven way to reduce infant mortality and child abuse. Arma Jo had wanted to do it all along. She just didn't have the money. She could pay the counselors in time dollars, and they could use the currency to pay their fees at the clinic. Soon the ideas were flying thick and fast. Why not a babysitting service for the sick children of working parents who can't afford to stay home and lose a day's pay. Yeah, a neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor program for the elderly could provide them with companionship and shopping and help around the house. Maybe volunteers could help provide better and cheaper child care. Some volunteers might even work by maintaining the cars used in the Time Dollar Carpool Program. Gradually, the staff and board members began to realize how many non, not strictly medical things people could do for one another and thereby help Central San Vicente do its job more effectively. If people paid Time Dollars for medical services, services, Central San Vicente might have less money, but it would also have less need for money. The possibilities could even be broader. If the clinic were to take on health problems at their source, it could contemplate a whole new range of activities. Digging wells, removing lead-based paint, for example. Pay people with time dollars for every hour of work they do in cleaning up your community. Yes, sir. If clients can provide rides and babysitting, why not undertake projects such as these? Just the previous month, elderly volunteers in El Paso had completed a major survey of sources of potential water contamination that identified several thousand potential sources of pollution. Already the volunteers had formed a tax force to work with the city and county on groundwater contamination. Wasn't that just the sort of thing Central Vincente could do? Well, yes it is. Dropping her voice to a quiet, matter-of-fact level, Arma Jo posed the question that seemed to flow from everything else. Doesn't this mean our idea of mission has to change, she said? If we're talking about health, then the real mission of El Centro has to be to create a community. Nobody was sure what that implied, but they knew one thing. Dispensing more and more medical services was no longer enough. It was a means, but not an end. Organizing to dig a well, mobilizing a march on city council was as much their job as vaccinating people. This was a way to turn community-oriented primary care into something more than just theory. A new standard of payment, ability to care. The first reaction from the Daughters of Charity was no. They couldn't afford more expansion, and they couldn't afford a request for more funds. Besides, they couldn't simply forgive the bills of Central San Vicente's clients. Those accounts receivables are being mortgaged to their bank. Army Joe needed to explain why, why this new system wouldn't hurt revenues. She sensed that the basic problem lay in the concept of ability to pay. Without money, you couldn't buy services. Anything else was charity, and that was limited by the amount of money at hand. We can't be limited in our vision by the amount of money we have, Army Joe said at the time. And St. Paul once said, do out of what you have, not out of what you don't have which means do out of what you have, men, material, and tools, and not out of what you don't have when you don't have any money. 
Our ability to pay can de can't determine our decision to give medical care. Can't we find a different standard? What about a standard based on ability to care or ability to give, she said. If you can pay money, pay money. If you can give care, then give care. Armando decided to get some data from her business manager, Jaime Villegas. It turned out that the cashiers in the business office had no way of verifying what clients said about their income. So the billing process turned into a bargaining session. The patients were poor, Central San Vicente was poor, but the patients were much poorer, so the clinic ended up absorbing a loss of 58-68% to 68 on every bill. Those who lied about their incomes paid less than those who told the truth. Taking into account the likely amount of lying, Central San Vicente probably had given away more discounts than necessary. Villegas said the time dollar concept is a way to stabilize this discount process and increase revenues. For example, the clinic might limit the low-income discount to 50% of the bill. Some might get 10%, others 20 or 30, but 50% would be the maximum. Right now, we're giving away an average of 58 to 68 percent, he says, and that's the average. Some of the folks make such a fuss that the cashier just gives them a 90 percent discount. With a new system, the clinic would have a position for bargaining. It could offer a larger discount, up to another 25 percent of the bill, for example, to those willing to help the clinic. Some would do it, some wouldn't, but that would help weed out the deadbeats. Either way, Villegas felt the center would come out ahead. If a family was willing to help, the center could save money. If they would pay, that would be great. At least this way, they would stop using us, he said. Central San Vicente would never turn patients away just because they couldn't pay, but patients who had no willingness to give were another matter. A line had to be drawn somewhere, an ethical, not just an economic line, so you find out who are the guys who don't want to give any time. And once people became personally involved in the clinic, they might have a different attitude towards paying and putting in their time, right? They will not only earn time dollars, they will want to pay off their bills a little at a time because the clinic will be more like family to them. No one's ever stiffed a time bank in the long run because there's no reason. Who wants to be a bum? Impossible programs became possible with time dollars. There were a lot of details to work out. How exactly do you incorporate time into a fee structure based on money? Since time dollar systems don't use market rates for wages, how would each credit be worth? How much would each credit be worth for purposes of paying off the bill? San Vicente was literally inventing a whole new way of thinking about prices and payments. Army Joe began to plan new programs that would be possible without time dollars. Wouldn't be possible. That would be impossible without time dollars. Infant and mor maternal mortality are big problems in the community, and from the start, the clinic has provided prenatal care. Time dollars opened the way for a much vigorous approach. For one thing, San Vicente decided to give expectant mothers an incentive to come in for prenatal care. The sisters designed a program that allows expectant mothers to use time dollars to reduce the charge for prenatal care from $250 to only $75. In addition, they can use time dollars to help to get help taking care of the new baby from an abuelita granny pool. A granny pool. How will the pregnant women earn these time dollars? From a baby shower, of course, at which friends will pledge hours, as well as more traditional gifts. At a time of bank failures, budget deficits, and general gloom, things look a lot brighter for many in the lower valley. Maybe actual cash income won't go up, but if people can get rides and tutoring and babysitting and other help from their neighbors, money will count a little less. Money gets you one of two things, someone's time or products, such as TVs. With time dollars, you get the first, and you get the second too, because the money you have goes farther. No one in the lower valley will get wealthy. Time dollars hardly substitute for the jobs and public services that the area desperately needs, but a sense of community and health are not bad starting points in a locality that has neither. One day during this period of planning and struggle, Army Joe opened up a note that had been pressed into her hand by a patient who'd served as a volunteer health worker. It was an old saying among her people. She said, if you do not live to serve, it said, you do not deserve to live. Phyllis Army Joe felt that she was back on home territory. Wonderful story.